I think we made a great start today and the video was really inspiring and very truthful um, and very useful as well for many of us. It's unfortunate, however, that based on statistics and World Economic Forum, it will take more than 170 years before we reach parity at the workplace. And it's even more, um, let's say, disappointing the fact that instead of progressing faster, we are reversing because now women have less opportunities at the workplace. Somehow the gap is widening. So we're worse off than we were in 2008 and today we're in 2018. So the news are not very good in terms of, you know, how fast we're progressing in real life. Obviously, awareness is raising. There are lots of campaigns, you know, all of us are aware of the issue, but unfortunately the results at corporate level is not, is not very, um, let's say, exciting. Um, concerning myself, I'm the CEO of the Hellenic Corporation of Assets and Participation, which is a holding company which was established in Greece a year and a half ago. And it's actually a holding company that brings under one structure all of the real estate and major shareholdings in large Greek enterprises, um, enterprises which are vital for the economy, like, for example, power, um, water utilities, infrastructure, transportation, urban transportation, uh, postal services, and so on. Some of the companies in our portfolio are also listed in the stock exchange, the Athens Stock Exchange. Um, why I say that? Because our role is to safeguard and to maximize the value of the property, but also our, our role is to contribute to sustainable economic growth in Greece and to contribute to conditions of social and economic stability. And we couldn't do that if we didn't put on top of our agenda uh, the gerund parity issue. We think it's very important and that's why if you go to our website, you could see that it's part of our internal regulation, but it's also part of the strategic plan that we have put together in order of how to better manage and transform the subsidiaries in our portfolio. Uh, my belief is that change starts at the top level. Uh, we need more women in the boards. And the myth that we don't have enough women because we don't have a great pipeline of capable women or, or whatever, I think it's not the right one. Uh, in order to have more women at the board, we just need to have you know, corporate governance and nominations committee doing the job well. We need to have very transparent criteria, very transparent processes of how we select board members. And we need, you know, boards which collectively have the talent, the skills, um, you know, to represent the businesses in the modern world. Uh, in a year and a half of our life as a corporation, I think we've done well at the board level. So in our board, we have four women out of the eight member boards, which means 50% parity. So it's a balanced board. And uh, over the last six months, we have assessed and uh, reinforced the boards of some of our subsidiaries. So, for example, the, the privatization fund in Greece has one woman in five board members. And the real estate company in Greece, which manages 70,000 properties in Greece, has two women in seven members, one being the deputy CEO of the company. So, you see, you can find women, you know, in, in companies which are pivotal for, for, for the economies and for the uh, you know, for, for, for making the economy more sustainable and, 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 and more competitive. Now, I said about the board, equally important is also to put in place very strong corporate governance frameworks. We need to make sure that we have the processes and the procedures that create transparency of how, you know, men or, or women are hired, how they're assessed, how they're promoted, how they're being compensated. Um, also, we need to change a little bit, and it's our responsibility, the corporate culture of the institutions. We should put in place um, whistleblowings or, you know, um, 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 you know, ways that we can um, eliminate discrimination at the workplaces. We have many phenomena which we all aware about, but in reality, we don't do anything about that. So there are ways to, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to raise the awareness and stop the bad practices and the discriminations in the workplace. But I think the most important one is for every single one of us to put it in our daily agenda. Um, for me, over the last 10 or 15 years, I always thought that, you know, I need to be a mentor and I need to actively sponsor and actively support women in my teams, women in my organizations, women that I have believed that they can do much more. 
Um, and this is about talking to the women. It's about explaining to them that the path to success and the path to leadership is definitely a very difficult one. It takes a lot of pain. It takes a lot of, you know, painful realities which we need to confront. It takes a lot of sacrifices. You know, it takes for women to become stronger, smarter and more resilient. Nothing is easy and nothing is, you know, it's black or white. We have to learn to, to be able to, uh, you know, to say, OK, we cannot make it all. We have to learn uh, to, to be more uh, risk takers. We have to learn to be more exposed, travel more, you know, spend more time outside. You know, our countries is OK. Um, you know, we can manage it all without being perfect at all times. Um, and I'll, I'll come to, to two critical moments in a women's life that from my experience, I think, uh, you know, we need to do more and we're doing more in our corporation. One is when the women enter the workplace, so graduating from universities and coming to the corporate world. Uh, they need more skills. Universities usually equip women with technical skills, but they don't learn them how to be more extrovert. They don't learn them how to think more strategically, how to make um, you know, themselves and brand themselves better, how to promote you know, the, the, the way of thinking, how overall to be better negotiators and better communicators. So I think the university should do more to equip the young girls, the young talented girls when they enter the, the workplace. And similarly, the institutions should do more in order to have this female talent more exposed to new challenges and new opportunities. I hate when a woman stacks with a role for 10 years and then we wonder why she has not progress. We need to urge women to take more roles you know, to take different assignments, to dare to do more, to dare to be more exposed, to dare, you know, to do things which are out of the ordinary, let's say, course of business. They need to be more exposed and they need to raise the profile in the organizations. I, and obviously, I totally agree that the, we need to create, you know, a flexible and, 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 you know, easy work environment so these women can have families and not, you know, choose to stay at home when, you know, they become mothers and they decide to have a family. Um, coming back to the, uh, to the issue of parity, uh, I, I just need to, to, to say again that parity, it's not a woman's issue and parity is not about ticking the box of quotas. Um, I think parity, gender parity, uh, women's representation, it's something which has to be at the heart of today's economy, today's society. We cannot talk about inclusive growth. We cannot talk about sustainable development if men and women uh, do not have equal rights and if they cannot contribute the same in today's economies. Um, so I think it's, it's something that, you know, it's, the problem is at the heart of today's um, economy and society. And we all, as you know, developed countries and uh, you know, people that we have education, we should all do more to make it happen because it's not going well. So it's in our responsibility to make it you know, faster and to make it become true. Thank you. Mm -hmm.